Morning everyone. Um, welcome. At as Tara said, a very windy and chilly Juma private game reserve this morning. Um, hopefully we will be able to find some animals. Um, so what we're going to do shortly is try head down towards the dam, uh, see if we can find any tracks. Other than that, we will just see what we can find. So guys, I am not that familiar with Juma. I, I did work in the Sabi Sand, but further to the south. So um, hopefully you'll bear with me while I learn the roads. Uh, hopefully we don't get too lost. Ooh, some buffalo overnight. So as you can see, there's quite a bit of cloud cover this morning um, and lots of wind. So a lot of your prey species are going to be a bit jumpy in the wind. But um, they like the wind about as much as we do because it makes it quite difficult for us to find things. Um, but if you're a lion or a leopard, wind is your friend. It gives you a chance to um, approach much, easier, e much more easily up to animals, uh, making hunting a little bit easier. And last night was a very, very dark night. Um, with very very strong winds so I'm pretty sure they're gonna be a lot of happy leopards who would have caught some supper. So we're approaching up to the dam now to have a quick look if anything's around there. Unfortunately no tracks yet. Something in the water there. Possibly you can see the hippo from yesterday. Um, we saw a, a squirrel. Let's see if he comes up. So can you go again with the name? Uh, hello Beast Fan. Um, I, was, I was born in South Africa. Oh sorry, Beast Fan would like to know a little bit about, about me and where I'm from. Um, I was born in South Africa and I've been, I had a very, very privileged upbringing that I've pretty much spent the most of my life living in the bush, in safari lodges. Um, so for my younger years I grew up in a reserve in northern Zululand. Um, and just before my teenage years, we moved up to northern Botswana, and my family had safari lodges in the Okavanga Delta. 
Um, so we were there for 10 years, um, and then after that I've lived and worked in Tanzania, uh, Zambia, Namibia, and most recently I spent a year in the rainforests of Central Africa in a country called Gabon. I'm pretty sure there's a hepto. Okay. Um, so for those looking to follow me um, on Twitter or on uh, on Facebook, uh, my Twitter is at Brent B R E N T Leo Smith L E O S M I T H, and then on Facebook it's exactly the same except there's a hyphen between the L E O and the Smith. So what I'm going to do guys is I'm going to actually turn around and hopefully the, the, the hippo might pop up once we come back down the dam wall in the other direction. But I think we're going to try head up towards um, uh, some open areas uh, to, the, to the west of us. Morning, MS. Um, my favorite animal is the African wild dog. Um, there's a couple of reasons for this. For me, it's by far the most exciting animal to watch hunt. Um, and unlike lions and leopards that sleep most of the time, they're very, very active. So there's almost always something going on. Um, and in certain areas, wild dog have a hunting success rate of around 80%, um, which makes them very, very exciting to follow. Also, they have probably one of the more complex social structures for, for predators, and they're one of the only only animals outside human beings where the the young the young are actually higher on the social hierarchy, where the whole pack is developed to look after the, the, the youngest members of the pack, which is very similar to human society, how we always put a lot of emphasis on our children and on babies being the most important thing, the way we look after them. Um, Wild dogs do very similar, and one of the only animals that will sacrifice themselves for their, for their youngsters. Unlike a lioness or, or even a leopard, if they feel they're under big pressure um, from another predator that's attacking them and their cubs are there, they will defend to a certain point before moving out um, and letting the, the, their youngsters die on the theory that they can always breed again. Whereas wild dog will really, really fight towards the bitter end for their babies. Not being a very cooperative hippo. There's a nice little lapwing on the edge of the dam. And some Egyptian geese. And we've got some barn swallows hawking over the water. Get these back in quickly. So like with quite a lot of things in Africa, beauty can be very deceptive. So we've got this very, very beautiful flower. It's called a large devil thorn. And this is the seed. And if you guys can see those big, 
spike thorns in there. And now what this seed is designed to do is actually fit between an animal's hooves. And it can actually be very painful. And sometimes when you see a, a wildebeest or an impala sort of limping around in the bush, it could possibly be a large devil thorn stuck between their hooves. And this is how this plant disperses its seeds. So it can spread it over a wider area. Um, it has quite a few traditional uses. One of the quite interesting thing about it is if you take the leaves and we pick them like this and we just put a dollop of water on them like that and you squish them together it becomes uh, let me just get a bit more going so you can see it and if you can see that it becomes almost like snot and it's actually a natural soap and um, traditional African midwives in this area the Shangan culture also used it as a lubricant for difficult childbirths so it's amazing even if there aren't any animals around there's always a lot to see okay let's carry on so hopefully I didn't put the devil thorn on my chair <laughs> okay so if you guys can have a look ahead of us I know so I've, I'm feeling very very lucky and excited today to have wild dogs on my first drive out here as you all know by now it's my favorite animal the painted wolf the lat the Latin, the Latin name for them is actually a direct translation to, to painted wolf. Uh, licon, which is, is, is the Latin word for, for wolf, and pictus, the painted on. They have the most fantastic coloring. Um, and as Tyro was talking to you about following signals on the giraffe yesterday with the white ears, have a look there. The very white tails um, are very important following signals, especially for dogs because they do get split up while they're hunting very often. They, can, they are capable of incredible feats of speed um, and stamina. They are quite difficult to stay with, especially when they go off the road. Um, and they are actually heading towards where we passed them in Parla earlier. So guys, if you do see me drive over a tree, um, so we don't drive over any sort of protected species and things like that, um, we try it. Uh, and a lot of these trees are encroaching on the burnt areas, but we always straddle them as well. So what that means is we will drive over it with the middle of the vehicle, um, and that enables the tree to be able to pop up afterwards, like this. I see them, they're still ahead of us there. Try the plant, watch the area. Oops, the daisies. guys who can see how many dogs are in this pack i got two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven so it's quite a nice size pack um you can see there's some slightly small individuals and that would have been this uh, last year's babies so they only breed once a year um and generally in about may um also oh, in may they'll start looking for the den oh, bugger. Um, in May they'll start looking for their den site and she'll generally have her pups in June um, and then that is the only time where they're actually solidly in one area for an extended period of time so you guys are going to hear my camera snapping away behind
Look at this, it's gonna be, they're gonna see that how the ears went flat. Part of the greeting ceremony, you can see very important touching the faces, uh, reaffirming the social bonds between the between the, the pack members. Oh look at them. Get some of that. Look at look at the, the greeting going on there in the background. Oh sorry, there's a vehicle in the way. Let me just go forward and we can just shoot down the road. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> Murphy's Law. Let's go back. There we go. Actually, that's a bigger pack. You see there's more adults that have joined from the bush on the other side. So it's probably looking about 14 or 15 individuals in this pack. 